You are now listening to The I. Walter Show. Real talk about nothing. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird brain. It's a plane. It's I. Walter. I. Walter. Yes, it's I, Walter, a strange visitor from another planet who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. I, Walter, who can change the course of mighty rivers, bend ears with his annoying voice, and who disguised as Walter Interanti, mild-mannered janitor for a great metropolitan newspaper, fights a never-ending battle for truth, nonsense, and the American way. And now, another exciting episode in the adventures of I, Walter. Okay, hey, this is Walter. Um, it's I, Walter. Uh, Saturday night. It's actually uh, Sunday morning now. It's midnight, so. Wanted to do a little bit of a quickie tonight. No puns intended, because um, there are some shows I actually watch. Um, not much on the home front of interest and stories as far as I can see. I generally get those. So Todd, my friend Todd, sends me some or if I find some. I really wasn't looking. Um, I actually got back tonight. I did go see a movie. It's been a long time. At least, yeah, it's been a while since I've actually gone to the theaters. But I went and seen that movie um San Andreas, and I thought it was actually pretty good, I have to say. Um, it's hard to say if I would recommend it, because I, I had actually a movie pass. I went to the 3D version of the film, so um, I had to pay a couple ex- like a couple of dollars out of my pocket, like three bucks. Um, I like Dwayne Johnson, so a little bit, you know, it kind of like, um, interest me. Plus, it reminded me of a movie I saw back in the early 70s when I was a kid called Earthquake, because it kind of reminded me of that. Um, overall, I think it's a safe movie to go see with your family. Um, it is pretty a bit gruesome, but nothing that's going to be disturbing, I don't think, for children. So, um, overall, I thought the movie was you know, pretty damn good. Um, and it, I wanted to actually see Poltergeist as well, but it's just I'm going back and forth at this point if I want to put the money down for that. So still getting over my cold a little bit or my bronchitis, so forgive my voice. Um, again, it's Saturday, uh, Saturday night or Sunday morning, I should say, actually. And there's a couple of shows I actually watch on that memorable entertainment channel me tv um you really have to have cable to get that but they show all these classic science fiction uh, movies or tv shows and horror movies as well so anyway um ironically speaking about that there's something they've been posting on facebook a lot and it's about gwyneth patro's mom played in an episode of Columbo, which is on MeTV, and it, her, her mom back when she was on Columbo, that's an old show, um, she looked just like her daughter. So um, it's, it's remarkable how much they looked the same. Um, kind of bleeding through some stories, um, some funny ones I had on my Facebook page. One was actually Sky, it was on, unfortunately, Huffington Post. Weird news, inventor gets shot in the groin to test out bulletproof uh, jock strap. There's a video for that. It's pretty entertaining, to say the least, again. Um, one, I actually, I did get from Todd. He sent it to me from two different sources. One was Huffington Post Crime, and thank God the other one wasn't, but I don't have the other source up. But it basically says the same thing. And it was titled, Teacher Investigated After Allegedly Sharing Nude Photos of Her Boob Job with Students. So here we go again. Um, you know, a 34-year-old woman, she, um, they basically, she resigned before they could fire her. But she's still, you know, under investigation, so to speak, because she was showing nude pictures from her cell phone to students of herself nude. 
and um, also before and after pictures of her getting breast augmentation. So that one was given to me from Todd, two different sources. I would never have found it. Um, it's just ridiculous. Um, hey, I'm just going to go to this one. Um, this is pretty interesting. Have you ever heard of a web? Uh, it's on Facebook, but it's actually for people who like exploitation films, you know, the 70s genre films, horror movies, you know, things like that. There is um, a link. You can actually find it on Facebook, and it's called Exhumed Films. Um, and Exhumed Films, me and a friend have gone to before. It's down in Philly, usually. Usually. Um, we went to a marathon of these exploitation films or um, grindhouse films, and it was a 12-hour marathon, and they were horrible. I, I couldn't bear it after five minutes, and I was had to sit there for 12 hours, me and this friend. This was down in Philadelphia, and then they had a 24-hour marathon of exploitation films, and we both agreed. It's like we're not going to do that. But again, it's from this um, film comp or this, um, what do you call it? it? It's called Exhumed Films. Anyway, um, they now um, are doing marathons at um, a drive in movie theater, which one was on all zombie movies, which I don't think I could have stomached that, no puns intended. But it's called um, The Mahonin. It's uh, let me spell it out because I don't know how to pronounce it properly. It's spelled with um, capital M A H O N I um, N I N G. It's a drive-in theater, and it says it's at six thirty-five Seneca Road, um, just off Route Four Thirty Three, Lexington, Pennsylvania, eighteen two thirty-five is the zip code. Well, anyway, um, yeah, they're actually, this one sounds pretty kind of interesting. They're going to show Sam Raimi's original Evil Dead, and there was another film they're going to show, because usually they show two, at least. But it's Evil Dead is the one they're really promoting. There's another one going to be um, shown, you know, it's like a back-to-back -back thing. Yeah, it says Two Nights of Gruel and Terror um, at this drive-in movie theater, so... Um, it sounds pretty cool, though. So it's like 10 bucks for the tickets. Oh, okay, here it is. Yeah, Evil Dead, the original one, 1981, plus the movie Zombie, 1979. So, yeah, I would actually almost be remotely interested. I hate driving theaters, but I think now you use actually the stereo in your car. Years ago, you used to have to put those things on your car. Because I want to – I remember distinctly going to one. I think it was – my parents had taken me to go see The Godfather, and I was I was out like a light. I was a little kid, so I could really care less about a mafia film, and I just remember just falling asleep. And my parents putting that clamped uh, thing in in their window. I mean, again, if you have a good stereo in your car, it's actually going to sound a lot better. So, but yeah, that was something on my. Uh, my things I wasn't going to bring up, but I did. Hey, I bought, folks, I bought an old film. An old, it's old school for me. Um, you're talking like somewhere in the 80s, I guess. Um, when I was a kid, it was, it was about a year and some change I spent down in Philadelphia at some place and, you know, of other kids. And these kids, you know, back then, back in when I was growing up, at least in the Philly area, it wasn't that big around here. It was more of a a Philly thing, um, Philly slash New Jersey, was the whole rap scene that was different than what it is now. I mean, it was actually the big thing back in the 80s, but it was more entertaining, uh, less offensive. Um, you know, I mean, you're talking like Run DMC, you're talking Will Smith. Um, I can't remember. The guy used to wear a big clock around his neck. I mentioned this to a friend. I still can't remember the guy's name. Um, but they were entertaining. They weren't offensive. They were literally entertaining. So anyway, the other big thing back when I was a teenager, while well, one was wearing sweatpants, you just bunch them up um, over your ankles or below your ankles um, and like basically wearing Nike sneakers. It was cool back then. It was fun. And just basically wearing like baggy T-shirts. Um, it was very comfortable too. So anyway... 
Um, one of the big things were also was breakdancing was really big. So a lot of films came out. One in particular was called uh, Breakin' and then Breakin' 2. So I was able to buy both films for like 10 bucks on Blu-ray because it was cheaper. If you buy them individually, you're going to pay just as much, like $15 for the one movie. So it came in the mail uh, Friday night. I had to go to work. I watched it today. It was like, yeah, this wasn't that bad. It was actually kind of entertaining. Um, I guess it was like at the time the movie came out, it was kind of being like, um, oh, God, I can't remember. I was going to say Streetcar Called Desire. Um, West Side Story. It was kind of like, okay, it was for that time period. It was West Side Story, but instead of using weapons, it was them, you know, one gang fighting against another one on their ability who could dance better. So it was actually kind of entertaining. Uh, I think it had Ice-T in the movie. Uh, he was really young back then. But, I mean, this is this is when, you know, rap was very uh, much so less offensive and there was no such thing as, you know, black on white or anything like that. People didn't look at that. I mean... I had this discussion with friends um, just recently even, and I said, yeah, I remember growing up and you never thought of a black person being black or a white person being white. There was no um, sep uh, segregation or separation as there is nowadays, which that was supposed to be taken care of once we got you know, a African-American president. We didn't even use politically correct terms back then. We didn't call somebody african-american or black we just thought of him as another person we never thought beyond anything like that so this film kind of reflected upon that and um i was really happy to see that because it just brought back some fond memories of back when i was that age you know because i was that was a pretty old film now so anyway um yeah so there was that and um Something else I wanted to mention I forgot, and I'm probably going to forget again. So anyway, there was another story I found I put on my page. The girls, again, very cute. I'm not going to say it a million times like I had mentioned yesterday, but it's another girl with Down syndrome, which you, you couldn't tell until you would actually, this time they actually have her had her speak in. And this was in our country because um, other girl was from Australia, I mentioned. And she won prom queen. And, you know, um, you know, hey, good for her. I mean, I'm, it's kind of weird. I mean, I guess it breaks the stereotypes from years ago of, you know, you you had Down syndrome. You just basically couldn't do anything with your life. I mean, obviously, these young girls are definitely proving that wrong. Um, very much so. So, oh, and on my Facebook page, uh, just going to mention it. I ate at Buffalo Wild Wings. There's a bunch of them around. I really like that place, but a friend and his his uh, brother always make jokes and post guys vomiting uh, and stuff on my page when I say I eat there. So it was pretty funny. Um, these are stories I really didn't want to mention. Uh, just kind of different, I guess. Um Anyway, this one story, unfortunately, it's the Huffington Post. So I really don't want to read it, but it's titled "Inside Out: Portraits of a Cross Gender Chil uh, of Cross Gender Children, Beautifully Documented um, Transgender Kids." Well, these kids, though these quote unquote transgender kids, they look like they're only like six, seven years old. So um, I never quite understood that, how, you know, a child that age would actually know if they're, you know, where uh, thought they should have been bought, born, you know, if you're a girl, born a guy, a boy, or if you're a boy, you should have been born, born a girl. I don't quite understand that, especially looking at these pictures i do have it on my facebook page but they're awfully freaking young they, they're only like seven years old how do they know this so again i just don't want to give it any more uh face time than i've already had have done had done whatever anyway um this was an article it just kind of caught my attention so i put it up it was called it was on a web link called opposing views i don't know where i got that from it says Ampuplex uh, 
Deminator. It looks like De- Deminator. Newly discovered wasp species turns cockroaches into zombies. So I saw that short-lived article. Um, just the title alone kind of caught my attention. It says a new species of wasp have been discovered in Asia that inject venom into cockroaches and can turn them into brainless walking zombies. So, yeah, I don't know where they find this stuff. Some type of mutation in wasp now. That's um, Yeah, it's entertaining. Um, this from my own sick humor, I guess. Um, some link I... Um, it's called Snag Films. They basically give you these links to free horror films. So I got this one, and it's the full movie called Head Games. Um, It's probably playing in the background right now. Hopefully, it doesn't pick up. But yeah, it was. It's on um, SnagFilms.com. Some older film, and um, like you're talking, like probably late '70s, something like that. Um, Yeah, it's like one of those kind of weird type of movies. And then there was another link for another film also on Snag Films. And it's a documentary on American Grindhouse films. So, got Taylor Swift in the background there. I don't know why. It was commercial. So, um, yeah, you know what? I really don't have much to say um, other than, um, yeah, it was funny. It was on the UK, uh, Daily Mail. I want to say UK Daily Mail, but they changed it. And it was titled, Watch the Spine Tingle a Moment. Um, a man discovers a huge spider hiding inside his ear before it crawls back inside. So it literally is a spider living in the inner ear of this man. And the thing that's kind of scary, though, um, he actually videotapes it, too. So it's a little bit, uh, to say the least, it's kind of, yeah, it actually is really disturbing. Um, and there's some pictures of the spider. So, oh, yeah, here is a story. Um, I, You know what? I got off the air and it was like, okay, I'm not going to acknowledge this. But it was titled, Loose, Lose Yourself in Sign Language Will Get You Super Pumped. And it's from Eminem, the song, original song. So there's this girl. She's adorable. I think she's supposed to be a woman. She looks like a girl, though, like a young girl. Um, she signs... The whole song of Lose Yourself, um, you know, the M&M, M&M song. I can't even say his name right. And I was, like, really shocked. I mean, I was, like, blown off my feet watching this. I was like, this is incredible. This girl did a really good job for somebody I really just almost, I hate to say it, I kind of despise of. And it was like, but she did such a great job. I had to at least not acknowledge her. Um, she did a really good job. Oh, here was something pretty funny. I'm just kind of glancing through, folks, tonight because I want to not be up too late. Um, Daily UK Mail again. A little bit of karma, to say the least. It was an article. Christian Syrian fighter beheads ISIS prisoner in revenge for the groups of aristocrats after discovering um, he was a member of the um, Islamic State. I know I kind of screwed up on the way I read that title. But yeah, it was a little bit of uh, poetic justice, or whatever you want to call it, karma, I call it, um, that these ISIS people who enjoy beheading, you know, Christians and stuff like that, well, they got uh, a taste of their own medicine, so to speak. Well, they couldn't taste it after a while once their head was detached. But I thought that was kind of entertaining to see that. Um, Yeah... Oh, you know, I read something else. And by the way, there was yet again another article. It said, uh, I probably got her name wrong, but Margaret Roby. I call it Roby. Maybe it's Robbie, but I call it Roby. Harley Quinn, basically, she plays, does another motorcycle stunt in the Suicide Squad. So every time I say, oh, they're going to put up another article on the movie Suicide Squad, they really do. I'm not even kidding. There was like two yesterday at least. And that's not all of them probably, but it was at least two that I caught. Um, so yeah, I mean, it just gets kind of old and it was funny. There was, that was actually on, I think it's comic book. Yeah, it's comic book, com, com, movie.com. There was an article from 
KTRH.com. And it was just, just the title alone was enough to get me going. So it says, employees are fleeing the Clinton Foundation because of Chelsea. is so awful, reports say. And then it says, KTRH. So I don't know what I said before, but it's KTRH.com. It says, the 35-year-old daughter, daughter of Bill and Hillary came on board as vice chairman in 2011. And since then... Uh, several seniors, le- uh, senior levels, uh, level staffers have left. So I like just saw that, and I, it just cracked me up because I, I just, I mean, the girl is getting an income basically on um, contributions that the Clintons get, which it's supposed to be for charity. Well, the charity is like, as my dad always used to joke about, charity belong, uh, begins at home. Well, they're literally these charity funds. They're basically scraping the money off of these Clintons and living off of money that people donate and they also pay their daughter's income off of that. So, um, yeah. So there was that. I'm trying to think if there's anything else of importance. Not really. That that last story was just entertaining enough. Oh, uh, it was a girl who actually, she played in um, the TV show of... Um, of Breaking Bad, she's actually going to be in the second season, apparently of um, of the, um, oh god, I'm drawing a blank right now. It'd be nice if they would post it, but um, no. Oh, um, of uh, Daredevil. So, I guess the speculation is maybe sure actually play Electra. I wasn't expecting for somebody else outside. Um, being casted for Electra, but its title it's on comicbookmovie.com it says um, that's got to hurt more photos of uh, Christine Ritter on the set of aka Jessica Jones I believe she was the one who did play in I could be wrong but she did play in Breaking Bad um, it says Daredevil has already been renewed for a second season after becoming one of the most successful Netflix shows of all time so why do we still not have so much as a single official still for AKA Jessica Jones, question mark? Whatever the answer, at least you have these cool um, new set photos. So this this is pretty cool. I assume she's going to be playing eventually what I assume become a lecturer. I could be wrong about that. Anyway, folks, um, I'll probably leave it go at that. There was an article um, because I used to love her. She was adorable now. And I saw her in person. She's gotten not so great looking anymore. Um, It was Melissa Joan Hart. I saw her in person a couple years ago at a comic convention. It was in the DailyMail.com. And it says, Melissa Joan Hart shows off her slimmed down figure in a strapless swimsuit at her sister's bachelorette party in Miami. Well, that's a little bit of an understatement. Um, she is built like a pear from uh, front to back. I wouldn't exactly call that slim down. Now, she was pregnant, but I wouldn't use the word slim. She's got this uh, one-piece green bathing suit on, and she literally looks like a pear. Uh, she doesn't look thin at all. And I know she was going to those... Uh, doing commercials for Jenny Craig or, or that other one, um, but it didn't seem to work, unfortunately. So love you, Miss uh, Melissa Joan Hart, but yeah, you're not exactly on the thin side. Um, anyway, it is Saturday night, folks, so I'm going to l- make sure people can have or Sunday morning to have a little bit of an enjoyment and not have me um, pounding their ear off so everyone i am signing off and have a good weekend because tomorrow i'm going to go visit my friend todd signing off it says i walter